But if there was one piece of advice I could leave behind, like say right now, you know, it sounds morbid, but say I just died. Like right now, poof, gone. If there was one fucking thing I could leave behind, because this is the catalyst for it all, it's get to the basic assumption. So it's the last day in Copenhagen right now. Uh, this is the first city on my month-long Euro tour in Copenhagen, Stockholm, Amsterdam, and Vienna. And uh, we're just trying to get in a quick uh, gym session before uh, taking the train to Stockholm right after this. And it is pretty fucking cold and I'm surprised how awake I am. So this is the rig, uh, the setup, and the amount of stuff one needs to bring for a tour. Uh, this is mainly just like personal stuff. There's some lenses, tripods, clothes, tons of fucking underwear and socks. This is all just pure electronic uh, for the seminar setups. Backpack with the computer. But yeah, I mean, this is, you know, you think, oh yeah, just bring a little camera to film. It's like, no, you have like the, the full setup, like a full suitcase dedicated to that. There's always a shift coming to Europe from America because in America everyone's like, yeah, you know, because it's like, we're American, we're obnoxious. In Europe it's, hello, you know, it's very stifled. So the, the responsiveness of the crowd, you know, in the past especially was like very different. So I'm like, oh man, I wonder if they're going to respond to this. Let's see how it goes. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was shocking. Like this crowd was probably even more intense than most of the American crowds. You know, this is like from Scandinavia where there's the Jantelagen where you're just very stifled. It's like, hey, don't speak up so on and so forth, conform, 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 and to be able to like, you know, break people out to such an extent. And I guess the contrast is too, it's like, there's that environment where they can finally break free. Um, yeah, you just see it like in their eyes, like, like lighting up at the end. Um, that was sick. Hey! 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 Good, let's get you to dance. <laughs> All right, now pause. I love it too, it's hard. like, oh my God. I know it's hard, but look at this, it's like, did you see it a couple times? It's like, he's there and he's about to, like it's inside him. Like it wants to come out, it's like it's there. And that's why I'm saying, it's very simple to do, yet so hard. Cause you don't have to do it, you just have to like, shut, it's like, fuck off ego, fuck off self-concept, let loose. Let's try again, cause you're not getting out of here without it. <laughs> It was still very much your head, but there were a couple little glimpses, if you saw, where it was like a little bit of smile, a little bit like, ah, oh, like that, and then kind of revert back, like, ah, oh, how do I look, ah, oh, what about me, ah, oh, like that, but that's the goal. He already has, like, we saw little glimpses of it, of him just like fucking letting loose, smiling, it's, th that is there, covered up by shit. The content of these events um, is completely new, you know, and this is the purpose of this tour, is I've been, you know, working on this new content for you know, this past year, year and a half, um, ever since the media scandal, actually, it kind of got me reflecting on the causality of things. And it's pretty crazy, like with a lot of self-help, personal developments, or even just any advice you hear, it's fiddling around with the effects. You know, that doesn't mean it's not valid, it's totally valid, but it never really gets to the cause. And this is why, you know, you'll get some results, but never the results you really want. There's always effort to maintain it. And most people just kind of get sucked back. So it's like, like a New Year's resolution, you hear like, hey, hustle, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna hustle, and you do it for a bit, and it's never really what you wanted, like you never fully get there. There's a lot of effort, it's draining, and after a while you just kind of get pulled back. 
And uh, that's because you never truly address the cause. You know, so if you think about it, it's like, okay, I'm going to work on hustling. The cause is why are you not inspired to work to, you know, on, on, to hustle in the first place? And it's reinforcing every time you're working on hustling that your default is you don't want to hustle. Working on self-improvement is reinforcing you're not good enough. So it's like this never-ending cycle. So it's kind of a head trip. And that's why I was curious to kind of see how people respond to the content. Like, are they going to get it? Is it too nuanced? Um, but people loved it. And then kind of making them go through you know, the exercises or diving into the subconscious, it kind of gets you to realize, like, you know, you're onto something. It actually brought up uh, some, some things that I didn't think of consciously. Like one thing, actually just one thing. And, uh, what did it bring up? Uh, <laughs> my dad, he, he always, like whenever I would do something wrong when I was younger, he would never punish me, he would never ground me. That's his policy, like no punishment. Hmm. But he would always bring me to, to the living room or wherever, like the kitchen or wherever he was at. And he would have me explain everything, like in detail, if I did something wrong. Like mm. go into every single little detail. And uh, <coughs> it's, um, it has been, I don't, it, it might sound weird, but it's been kind of traumatic, like uh, yeah. having to, because I had to relive every, every time I did something wrong, I had to relive it. You know, while being judged and feel guilty about yeah, it. Yeah, while being judged and feel gu guilty about it. Um, mm -hmm. Plus, yeah, I mean, this is, I don't, yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to be too, like, go too personal, but uh, uh, that always made me, because he's a psychiatrist, so, mm. and he always tried to find the root cause, like, what made you do the, 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 the wrong thing. So I was always, like, looking for, uh, like, some kind of, like, cause inside myself like where yeah. why did i like why did i throw snowballs or like get in a fight or like do stupid shit like yeah uh in school or or whatever so uh i just it just came up like time and time again like like 10 times more or when i when i thought about things that happened in the club like a couple of girls rejecting me and stuff like my dad just came flashing back in my <laughs> in my head, so that was pretty, pretty powerful. Like, I, I wasn't expecting that. A lot of this is just has been in my head, like literally since the media scandal, just been thinking about this, reflecting on, you know, reflecting on life, reflecting on different paradigms, and to put it out and uh, then just kind of build it together with an audience is what this is about. You know, it's like I share the idea, look at the questions, see what clicks, what doesn't, flesh it out, and being on stage too, it forces you, it, it really pulls it out of you. You know, because in your head you're like, oh yes, yes, and now you're on stage, it's like, whew, your, your brain is just fully there, engaged. So, yeah, I mean, that's the, the general idea of this tour. Um, and the, the basic idea is re-examining like those paradigms, like what's the place it's coming from, get to the cause. You're either coming from a happiness, abundance, complete, enough, self, authentic, paradigm, like that's your basic assumption, or you're coming from unhappiness, scarcity, incomplete, not enough, ego, inauthentic paradigm, okay? And this shit here, depending on what paradigm you're in, is gonna influence every single thing that you do. It's going to influence the way that you live your life, everything, okay? Now, to find out what it is, just think, what is your default? Right now, if you just did nothing, what would you fall to? And just by the way that we're conditioned, we all think we fall to this. It's pretty crazy. If we don't hustle, for example, if we don't make money, if we don't work on ourselves to improve, um, if we're not successful, if we don't get a good job, if we're not interesting, we fall to shit. That's literally what we think. Like right now, if I told you, like, don't hustle, you'd be like, I, mu I must hustle or else or else I fall to this. So in a way, our basic assumption, this is again, the way that we're conditioned, everyone's like this, we assume that that is our default. And that's the shit that's driving us, and from that basic assumption of unhappiness and scarcity, so on and so forth, all of our attitudes, beliefs, behaviors, actions grow. Okay, and what we try to do, and this is what's interesting, is we assume that that's our default, and then we're all seeking this. We're all seeking happiness, abundance, complete, enough, self, authentic, but 
assuming that our defaults on happiness, scarcity, so on and so forth. And this is why it never fucking works. We're assuming scarcity running towards abundance. We're assuming unhappiness running towards happiness. And that's why everything we do is just compulsive and uh, it's just never ending. You know, it's like you'll hustle a little bit. And then after a while you're like, okay, I hustled, but I need to hustle to keep moving. If I stop hustling, I'm gonna fall. Or you achieve a little bit of success, like a little bit of success. And then you feel yourself falling into unhappiness and scarcity again. So you do more success, more success to maintain it. So again, it's a lot of effort and it's just never ending because you're still assuming scarcity and everything you're doing is reinforcing that your default scarcity. So even if you're trying to seek abundance, say, you know, I want a lot of money. I want a lot of uh, options. I want X amount of, you know, status in the world. No matter how much you get, it's still based on, I need this to hang on to this to run away from scarcity. So you're still going to be scarce. Now you're going to be worried about losing them and you're always going to want more, more, more. You know, or at some point it's like, I got used to this, it's not enough, I'm gonna, I keep falling, I keep falling, I need to keep getting resources. And uh, I mean, I see this everywhere. It's like, people are just like getting more and more and more, and there's still that compulsiveness, there's still that stress, and no one's really fulfilled, no one really enjoys it. The key is to re-examine that basic assumption and to move all that over to assuming that abundance or happiness is your default. If you don't do anything, you don't fall, you realize you're there. And that can, just that gets you thinking differently. And that, um, you know, is what I realized. I'm like, whoa, like, why am I not abundant? You know, and then there's all the questions, the resistance, like, well, if you are abundant, why should you do this? Why should you hustle? Why should you be successful? But then even that, it's like, why should you? Who says you should? You know, and you have to be okay and fully self-accepted with where you're at, like, I'm there. And then you have to trust that there's nothing you need to do but you will naturally be inspired to do something. You know, so it's like, um, I compare it to like making money. It's like, I'm working to make money. I'm working to make money. If I had money, I wouldn't work. But that's not true. If I gave you money and you're like, no matter what you did, you had all the money in the world, you wouldn't do nothing. You know, you may take a break because you're so used to running away from running towards, but after a while you'd be inspired to do something. So it's tapping into that. Operating from, you know, abundance and inspiration versus scarcity and desperation. Boom. So, finally in Stockholm after this fucking train ride. Uh, I mean, yeah, this is, you know, the typical travel day. I mean, usually it's by plane, but because Copenhagen and Stockholm are somewhat close to each other, I just like the no hassle. If you get on the train, you can do some work. Um, got some uh, editing done, worked on the content for this weekend's events, listened to an audiobook for a little bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is, yeah, your average, you know, travel day in the life on a world tour. You know, people think it's always glorious and glamorous, like every day is action packed. But uh, no, I mean, this is it. You know, it's like wake up, gym, uh, pack everything up, uh, head to the train station, jump on the train all day, uh, arrive. We're gonna go check into our hotel right now, probably do a little bit more work and uh, pass out. But, um, you know, that's it. And uh, funny enough, too, just uh, to conclude, what I'd say is although it may not seem so like amazing in contrast to some of the other days on the tour where it is like just insane. Um, you kind of like these more chill days, you know, it just gives you some time to reflect, some time to contract versus always expand, sometimes to, you know, just take it in a little. So yeah, uh, a day in the life traveling. I just want to say thank you, thank you very much. Give me, give me a hug, Julian. Yeah, Three, two, one. Yeah! Great speech. Thanks. Thanks, man. Oh. It was awesome. Thank you. Thank you a lot for tonight. And it was just thank you. It was so nice. So look at that one. That one. That one. Hey, man. Thank you. Thank you. See you on Saturday. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. I know. The next time. Like, do you have a product where it's focused on self improvement? Coming January. Coming January. Okay. I'm working on it, like, working on it now. Thank you so much. You have You're a really in. fucking huge fan base in Czechoslovakia, and they're just waiting Czechoslovakia. for Czechoslovakia. Go ahead.
Thanks, man. Oh, what? Oh, hey! Fuck you, man. Fuck you. Yeah. Sounds good, dude. Hey, man. Thanks for coming out.